Hey everyone, so we've been dating rocks here, and looking at this image, how do we know what rock layers are oldest? Well, generally, if I fall and then something falls on top of me, I fell there first. So my fall would be younger than the thing that fell on top of me. I think it's probably the same for rocks. So the thing that fell first could be this bottom layer here, mm -hmm. and then you can see this grayish layer above it, and then there's another darker layer above that, then this yellowish line, and another layer above that. So kind of like layers of a cake, the bottom had to be there first, and then you kind of go from there. Yeah, it indicates different materials being laid down in different amounts of time. Thicker layers, you can imagine, probably take a little longer to form than the thinner ones. So it helps us to determine how long something's actually been there. But we can't get the exact age unless we radiometrically date the rocks that are in those layers. But we can get a good estimate or relative age based on these five rules. Yeah, the first rule being superposition, which is just common sense as you can get. Rocks that were there first are older. The bottom layer would be the oldest and the younger layers would be above that. Younger and younger and younger as we go up. Horizontality is the idea that rocks should be laid down in an undisturbed fashion. You have rock layers forming in kind of nice flat sheets on top, one on top of the other. And if there's an event that can make those layers not be perfectly horizontal, that event had to happen after the rocks were already there. An example would be folding or faulting or breaking or shifting of the rock layers all had to happen after the layers were put down. There's this thing <coughs> called inclusions when uh, something is put, laid down and then something forms around it. Obviously, the thing inside would have been there first and therefore is older than the rocks surrounding it. Cross-cutting relationship is when we have magma introduced into our rock layers. A cross-cutting intrusion of magma across layers, that layer had to be there for the intrusion to kind of spill onto it. And finally, another kind of superposition where a volcano would uh, put lava on top of other rocks and those rocks had to be there before the lava was laid down. So we're gonna use these five rules to look at a couple scenarios here and try and determine what event happened first. So in this setup here, we look at this rock strata and we see that there are about five different events possibly that happened here. So what would you think is the first thing that happened? Well, something had to be laid down first. In this case, the lowest level seems to be B. Um, on top of that is W and E, but then something weird kind of happens here. So it looks like Q might be the fourth thing event that occurred so B went down then W went down then E then it looks like there was a shift there was a fault there was an earthquake something happened that broke those rock layers shifting W and E down or shifting the right side of this picture up so then the next event would be that you can see the layers are not perfectly uh, flat next to each other so there must have been some weathering that happened some erosion broke down the rock and pushed those upper layers away. Yeah, the wiggly line there where you have the arrow uh, is an indicator of erosion or weathering uh, when we look at cross sections like this. And then the youngest event here would be K. Layer K, because it's on the top. So our order for this, we'd have the oldest event would be B, followed by W, followed by E, followed by Q, which is the fault or the shift in the rocks that follows the horizontality principle. Then erosion, on top of that, that also kind of falls in the horizontality rule as well. And then layer K would be our youngest layer uh, based on these events. All right, so let's try another rock layer here. We've got D, Z, and X. What do you think might have happened first? And give me the principle that you would use. Okay, well, there's two possibilities here. You have D, well, actually, all three seem to be situated just as low as one another. So the next thing I have to look at is, well, did any of these things cut through the other as they were going along? So what I'm thinking is that D is the lowest layer. And the reason for that is because X and Z are both igneous intrusions. Igneous meaning magma forcing their way into the existing rock layer. That is correct. And from what I can tell is D was laid down first. That would be superposition. X came along later. It was an, what was it called? 
uh, cross-cutting. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, X came along later. It's called cross-cutting relationships. And Z uh, cut through X. So it is also a type of cross-cutting. So there are two events of cross-cutting that happened after the initial layer was laid down. So the oldest event here is D. Followed by X and Z. Z. Okay, and then there might be some erosion on top of that because the upper layer is not perfectly smooth. But if they say, hey, what are the oldest events and they only gave you three, D, X, Z. So as this image shows you here that these layers can start getting more and more complicated. We showed you kind of three easy ones. You're gonna work through a bunch of different setups that we've given you in class and you're gonna use those five rules to try and determine what came first, what was the oldest event, and then what was the youngest event by just using your common sense and your relative dating rules. And the more you practice, the easier this will become, and you'll be able to see a layer like this, or like this, and be able to tell us what came first. Good luck, we'll see you next time.